This hour of the Costa Report is brought to you by IBM. Big data at the speed of business. Welcome to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and thank you for joining me for another two hours of Straight Talk Radio. I want to give a special welcome to members of America's Armed Forces who are joining us over the Internet today or tuning in to our podcast. Thank you for your emails and letters and for your service to our country. And I also want to welcome listeners who are joining us from coast to coast on radio stations in all 50 states. In just a moment, we're going to hear from one of the world's foremost experts on earthquakes, Mr. David Nabhan, to find out how far along scientists are when it comes to predicting earthquakes. Is a system like the tsunami and hurricane warning system in the works for earthquakes? During the next hour, we're going to find out whether we're getting close to knowing when and how the ground beneath our feet may shift. But before Mr. Nabhan joins us, as is my custom each week, let me tell you a little about his background. David Nabhan is a graduate of Mesa College in San Diego University. He taught school in South Central Los Angeles for 19 years, during which he was the Los Angeles Unified District Earthquake Preparedness Coordinator. He has authored four books on earthquakes, and his work has appeared on the CBS News, Popular Science, London Daily Mail, MSNBC, San Francisco Examiner, and hundreds of popular news periodicals and television and radio programs. For the past two decades, Nabhan has been advocating for a seismic risk warning system for the West Coast, calling for the governor of California to convene a panel of experts to study the feasibility of an alert system, something we'll hear more about later in today's program. It's my pleasure to welcome to the Costa Report earthquake expert, Mr. David Nabhan. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Nabhan. Well, thank you for uh, for having me on, Rebecca. It's quite a privilege to be on a show that's uh, that's had on more presidential candidates than meet the press or, or almost anyone else. So I'm, I'm much ob- <laughs> <laughs> I took a look at your site. I'm much obliged to uh, have these words with your audience. Oh, well, you you know, we're very, very fortunate. We uh, have had the honor of having some of the greatest leaders and some of the greatest experts and and in many cases, unknown voices, which really the mainstream media tends to overlook and uh, not deliver their messages properly to the general public. So it's our privilege to have uh, some time with you today. Really appreciate really appreciate that. Put me in the latter category as the unknown. So, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> now most of us are not earthquake or geology experts. So, I thought maybe a good place to start today would be to talk about some of the techniques that scientists are using to anticipate earthquakes. Well, I like you. I've been privileged to talk to uh, and and have verbatim uh, inclusions into my work, Earthquake Prediction: Dawn of the New Seismology. It's coming out in a few weeks, uh, uh, June the twentieth uh, of next month. Uh, and your list, uh, who, who have in, included their uh, verbatim uh, experts on a dozen uh, cutting-edge dynamics that are being studied uh, having to do with seismic precursors. And your listeners are going to be fairly shocked not only by the number of these esteemed seismologists and physicists who are gracious enough to give their opinions, but who they are and uh, the, the, the chairs they occupy. The um, um, PIs at NASA, for example, lead scientists at the SETI Institute, physics laureate at the uh, Andrea Bina Seismic Observatory, uh, professors at La Sapienza University and, San- and your nearby San Jose State University, uh, chief seismologist at the Bahaba Atomic Research Center in, uh, in Mumbai. And um, the, 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 what they're studying is uh, good. Uh, it's, it's, it's really uh, an astounding, the, 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 the steps that, have ta- that science has taken forward in the last 25 years regarding seismic precursors and seismic forecasting. Everything from high-energy particle bursts in the upper atmosphere about seismic zones to um, something called the latency theory, uh, P wave, S wave velocity differential changes, slow slip earthquakes along the uh, Cascadia deep uh, beneath the uh, Juan de Fuca plate, changes in electrical conductivity along the fault lines and changes in resistivity and uh, uh, water table uh, uh, quirks and uh, venting of, geo, of, 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 uh, of gases, geohydrochemical precursors, along with uh, 
you know, uh, I don't want to get into the weeds, but animal uh, uh, perception is uh, being studied uh, all over the world. The Chinese have been, uh, they, they employ thousands of people across China for the last 50 years watching what, uh, what may be occurring, uh, how animals might, certain species might pick up infrasonic or, um, or electromagnetic signals. So there's a lot being done for, for, for anybody in California to think that this matter is stuck uh, where it was 50, 100 years ago. They've been, they're, they're ill-informed on this. Well, that is a good point, and that's what got us interested in having you speak today on our program, and that is the fact that so many scientists along many different fronts are studying many different metrics and methodologies for, uh, for, for anticipating major earthquakes. And so it's not uh, what I really want the general public to understand is it's not just one methodology and it's not just one metric that's being looked at. Scientists are, are using everything from gas emissions uh, from the, you know, the bowels of the earth to electromagnetic changes to all kinds of uh, uh, different theories on. Uh, and I, and it, and it's likely that that the precursors will look at all of these things combined. In other words, this might be a very complicated algorithm. You know, you use, boy, I could not, I agree with everything you said. And one of the uh, great experts in my book, and he's nearby, the, uh, Dr. Freund, Dr. Friedman Freund at San Jose State University, he gave me a really uh, an excellent quote for my book. Uh, he's he's the fellow who has uh, amazingly donated a, a million and a half of his own dollars to nudge NASA in the direction of putting a series of satellites above uh, seismic zones that he feels will be able to detect infrared emissions from a, uh, an arcane series of, uh, uh, of physics that I don't want to bore your listeners with, but more or less treating the San Andreas uh, a, a, as a transistor, as you were talking about. Uh, there's a number of uh, of disciplines that go into uh, what he's proposing and uh, as we were talking he the, the 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 quote he gave me geologists were not interested in his uh, in his work because it had to do with uh, physics and he couldn't get physicists interested in it because it had to do with seismology so he was left in the lurch and what you're talking about is absolutely required an interdisciplinary panel of astronomers physicists chemists uh, chemists uh, mathematicians to determine these probabilities uh, to to work together to uh, uh, to solve this. Uh, you're right. It's a very naughty problem that uh, that has eluded science for a, for a century. But it's a new day now. We're not. It's not 1917. It's 2017. And and this matter that has been pro- proclaimed impossible. You know, earth, the earthquake prediction is impossible mantra that has been uh, broadcast on the West Coast. It's it's held back this the the these steps forward, but I, I I agree with you. I think we're years, months away from at least a rudimentary system based on, as you say, quite a number of things: space-based, ground-based, and uh, I've done a lot of uh, my interest is in gravitational tidal triggering, but uh, five or six, maybe a dozen of these uh, paradigms working together. But these are the hardest problems to solve. This is not like a a tsunami warning system or a hurricane warning system that fits uh, very comfortably in a meteorological study or that kind of thing. In this particular case, as you say, it's going to require uh, us casting a wider net of scientific data from physics all the way to geology and it's when we have to attack problems that don't fit into neatly into a silo but require an algorithm that encompasses a broader range of science that we seem to stall out and uh, and so uh, I'm glad you're bringing this point up because I think that uh, to this point there's been resistance in each individual silo to look at the data of other scientists and i think that's what we're seeing movement on and that's why that gives us great hope that we'll get a early detection system here in the near future now we have to take our first break but stay right where you are we'll be right back with more from david nabhan you're listening to the costa report Big data is changing the way organizations work. 
From data-driven marketing and ad targeting to the connected car, big data is fueling product innovation and new revenue opportunities. It's creating a culture in which business and IT leaders join forces to realize value from all data. They infuse analytics everywhere and make speed a differentiator, gaining competitive advantage from faster, more informed decisions. Leading organizations are creating new business models, developing new roles, and defining new big data architectures, including an infrastructure that can manage and process exploding volumes of structured and unstructured data, in motion as well as at rest, while protecting data privacy and security. Find out how IBM Big Data and Analytics can transform your business. Visit www.ibm.com slash big data today. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now, and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now, and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules can stop the pain and get you the best deal we connect you with a team of former irs agents and tax professionals who will get the irs off your back we saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world call tax solutions now time is running out call 800-987-0577 Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. to give dad his medicine. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. to give dad his medicine. At 6 a.m., I make his breakfast. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. to give dad his medicine. At 6 a.m., I make his breakfast. At 7 a.m., I shower. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. to give dad his medicine. At 6 a.m., I make his breakfast. At 7 a.m., I shower. I start laundry at 8. At 10, we go for a walk. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers for advice, tips, and support. Together, let's help each other better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. I am done with my mattress. That's right. I'm not spending another night on this old bag. My new mattress comes today, and this thing is out of here. Bye-bye, mattress. Yep, bye-bye, mattress. So says you and about a thousand other people every day. And that's a lot of old mattresses with no place to go. There's the landfill, of course, where they just take up space. But what a waste. Because you could send it to a mattress recycler, where old mattresses get broken down into steel, foam, wood, and fiber that become new steel, carpet padding, home insulation, garden mulch, biomass fuel, locomotive oil filters, and all kinds of other great stuff. So Bye Bye Mattress is right. But don't toss it. Recycle it. It's easy. And it's free. To find a mattress recycler in your area, visit BuyBuyMattress.com. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and my guest today is earthquake expert, Mr. David Nabhan. And before the break, we were talking about the need for many diverse disciplines in science to work together to produce a rudimentary system for the early detection of earthquakes. So let's talk about your work to establish a free public warning system. Tell us a little bit about what that system might look like. Well, what this whole matter comes down to is a topic uh, you, about which you've written. You're the expert, Rebecca. You've written a lot of. You're the sociobiologist. It's it's uh, you know, and our, our I, I believe the term you used was uh, counterfeit uh, correlations. People's reluctance to to believe what they see in front of them or to 
have to who have latched on to something that's incorrect that uh, you know that's that's masquerading as truth so I put a very simple, very obvious, very easily verifiable table of empirical evidence into the public forum regarding whether or not there exist higher probability windows for seismic activity on the U.S. West Coast based on conjoined lunar and solar gravitational tides periodically strengthening and um, acting to not to you know, cause earthquakes but to trigger earthquakes on fault lines that might be about to rupture in any event. So there it is in a nutshell as far as I'm concerned. I the uh the uh the, those the the um the thousands of researchers around the world that I've referenced and myself and dozens of those eminent respected scientists who grace the pages of my book are all of the opinion that you know the, the mantra of uh of this being insoluble is false and uh, it's simply because we've seen it repeated so often and with this supposed certainty that this uh, sort of uh, self-fulfilling prophecy has been inculcated, I think, into the very fabric of the U.S. West Coast. So, um, the uh, what I what I've offered so, to do. So, my- in other words, are you saying that we should have like some algorithm that takes all of these uh, known relationships between earthquakes and uh, what conditions existed, scientifically measurable conditions existed prior to the earthquake? And we should look at when those uh, metrics line up and and then be able to create some kind of a risk gauge, if you will, a higher risk for an earthquake or a lower risk, and somehow communicate that to the public. Is that what we're talking about? You said that better than I than I bumbled my way through. You said that much better than I did. As as Carlo, you know, we have to be careful though, as as Dr. Carlo Doglioni told me, one of the great seismo- Italian seismologists in my book, he, he discovered some years ago that the moon was dragging the entire North American continent westward. And he used the term not setting off fireworks, even if and when this matter should be solved, because there really are some great questions, Rebecca, that lie beneath this discussion about what could be done, even if we were dead certain that an earthquake, for example, were going to strike tomorrow in Los Angeles or Seattle or, or, or Santa Cruz. We can't evacuate entire regions here in the U.S. like has been done in China. Well, or that's Maine. a good point. Let's say yeah. we do have a early detection system, and and we start narrowing down with great certainty the you know within these three days mm-hmm. this level earthquake is probable. What would we? What would the public do with that information? That is the uh, as uh, that is the million dollar question. Uh, Something like that has happened before, and it's not turned out well. Back in the early 70s, uh, the mid-70s, uh, uh, Dr. Whitcomb, from, uh, uh, a very well-respected a Caltech researcher, he didn't even predict an earthquake, uh, but somebody got some, uh, some, somehow the, the research he was doing on the latency theory leaked out to the press, and uh, there was some great harm because the mega retailers and uh, and uh, the the real estate brokers in Los Angeles actually threatened to sue him, and the city fathers were up in arms as well because it caused great uh, economic uh, harm to the city. Nowadays, with uh, the mega retailers in Southern California, for example, giving an earthquake prediction or a, even a higher probability time and date, some of these that I've issued are take place on on uh, Black Friday, for example, for and in the dawn. So. Mm-hmm. It's. Uh, I'm not. I'm not proposing that I have the answers to all these questions. And but Dr. what would the public do? Let, let's say that we, you know, because look, we all know that artificial intelligence and predictive analytics are really narrowing down, mm-hmm. uh, right, our forecasts. Yeah. I mean, they're they're helping us to search all of the information that's on the web. They're going to help us to bring thousands, millions, right, of correlations related to earthquakes they're going to help us eventually understand the precursors and the risk level so we communicate this to the public and then what happens because well, you because you were you know in charge of earthquake preparedness in in Los Angeles so who better to ask than you who who was charged with this this function what would you tell people to do well here's what i suggest in my book simple as you just said Simply, the first step would be simply informing person, large populations of the truth. Millions of people, no safeties are, no heavy-handed government stuff. Millions of people simply being informed 
doing what they decide is best for their family's protection. Millions of people uh, uh, checking their calendars and uh, every so often, like for these higher, these gravitationally tidal uh, windows I speak of. And using those as reminders over the year to go over the earthquake preparedness with their children and the elderly in their household, that in itself could make a real difference. And so, and so when far- you see high risk, let's make this personal. When you see high risk, do you do you avoid going over bridges? Do you not go into high rise buildings? Do you call in sick to work? I mean, personally, no, what what do you do? Well, and so you could in, uh, inform the police, the fire, the EMS, the utilities companies. They may have lots of tricks up their sleeves that nobody has even asked. Uh, the nuclear regulatory institutions, uh, uh, are there valves that could be installed? for You know, the great harm in an earthquake doesn't happen because of the earthquake. It happens in Los Angeles when the big one hits. They're estimating 1,600 fires. So no one's ever asked all these entities what could, you know, what could be done if a, a slightly higher elevated level were, were utilized. And what we're looking forward to do is not to avoid the uh, the disaster, just to try to mitigate, you know, an, un- so an let me, unbelievable let me, catastrophe. Uh, okay, so let me bring this down to a practical uh, statement here. Are you saying that on high risk days, perhaps the fire department would keep more people on staff on the high risk days? Is that reasonable to expect? Maybe. Maybe. So, so what you're talking about is that we might manage our resources according to the risk levels. Absolutely. And, for example, if something ground-based, uh, forget what, my, what I say about uh, gravitational tidal triggering of earthquakes. Helium-3 was just discovered months ago venting from the Newport Inglewood fault. Uh, that's rather astounding because helium-3 is not found anywhere in the solar system except on the moon, we thought. Uh, and now we see it's uh, it must be venting from the deep from from the upper mantle. So that fault line is very deep. It, it's the one that killed 120 people in Los, in Long Beach in 1933. So assume that some sort of um, uh, um, you know very anomal very uh, alarming venting of helium three gas or some extreme change in uh, one of these indicators that I mentioned prior, along with uh, a, a higher probability perigee event. Under those kind of circumstances, you might want to do exactly what you just said. Uh, put a few more cops on the beat uh, uh, and, and take those precautions you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Now, we have to take another scheduled break, but stay tuned. We'll be back after these important messages from our sponsors. You're listening to the Costa Report. I'm here today with Scott Caraccioli of Caraccioli Cellars, whose Brut Cuvée is winning wine awards faster than we can name them. What is it about Caraccioli's Brut Cuvée that sets it apart from others? I really think it comes down to both process and the fruit. Uh, We're in a ideal location to grow Chardonnay and Pinot Noir and being able to harvest that at optimal pick points in Monterey County where you have a climate and soils that produce these grapes in the best way possible. Pulling them earlier on, you still get a lot of fruit expression, but you get a lot of acidity, which gives you the opportunity to make killer sparkling wine. And our Brute, being our flagship wine, has everything that's possible when it comes to sparkling wine. You can order any of our products directly from us by visiting our website at caracciolicellars.com or calling the tasting room directly, 831-622-7722. I'm Paul George of the Indiana Pacers. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. So I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. I'm Paul George. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke F-A-S-T. Fast. Life is why. 
Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. Women now make up 37% of the workforce, changing their role forever. Harvard Medical School has now opened its doors to new female applicants. The first woman is now in space. The majority of last year's doctorate degrees were earned by women. We've come so far, but our news is changing for the worse. More women die from heart disease and stroke than men, even though it can be prevented. Make a change at GoRedForWomen.org today. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the American Heart Association's Go Red for Women. Okay, what are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. So mommy's going to teach you how to dress yourself. Underwear always comes first, name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole or you have to start all over. Socks going first, then shoes right on right, left on left. With shoelaces, just take the ends, cross them over, switch the loops, the rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and you're left with bunny ears. Got it? Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day, making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit 2 men 2 xorg to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. Psst. Yeah, you. It's me. Your heart. Listen to me. We've got to talk. High blood pressure is serious. And yours? Whoa. What happened to us? We used to be so much more active. But lately, you've been ignoring me. I know you think I'm just going to keep ticking away forever. But you're wrong. You can do so much more to control your high blood pressure. Doing the minimum isn't doing enough. I'm under a lot of pressure and can quit whenever I want. Bet you didn't know that. But I like my job. Just treat me better. Check on me. Give me something green to nibble on every once in a while. And maybe we can do some exercise on occasion. Let's get to it. After all, we're in this together. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. High blood pressure can lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get your blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. Find out how at heart.org slash blood pressure. Check, change, control. A message from the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and if you're just joining us, my guest today is earthquake expert Mr. David Nabhan. Now, one of the problems with an early warning system is that if the system is wrong two or three or four times, people get desensitized, and then they suddenly don't take it seriously. So there's some danger in launching a warning system too early, isn't there? There absolutely is, and you make an excellent point. It might be a good segue for me to give some kudos to, to the United States Geological Survey, though, because what they're doing at this very moment, they've run out of money, so the project is stalled. I don't know if you've heard of the uh, – uh, you know, there is dead certain absolute earthquake prediction in California at this very moment, but it's sort of cheating. It's called the uh, early the earthquake early warning system, and what they're doing, they're, they, they're, they've they already installed 600 uh, – sensors along the San Andreas that are, are triggered when a P wave takes place, you know, a millisecond after a great earthquake takes place on the San Andreas, for example, and then the message at the speed of light is raced ahead of the seismic waves to warn cities in its path. So your cell phone could be connected to it, uh, BART is going to be connected to it, uh, planes late, uh, taking off or arriving at LAX could be diverted uh, Surgeons just getting ready to uh, perform brain surgery could, could you know, a screaming warning could cause them to stop. So, and your cell phone will be connected to it. So and how that, much advanced warning does that system give? Boy, you ask good questions. That, <laughs> <laughs> they pay me to do that. <laughs> no, you're you're very good, Rebecca. It depends on how far away the the earthquake. If it if this earthquake takes place directly under you in Los Angeles, it's no good whatsoever. If it's 30 miles away in the Mojave or on the Coachella Valley segment, where it's where the big one is going to come from, you may get 10 seconds. You may get uh, 12 seconds, and boy, that can make a, a huge difference. That could make life saving. So my hat is off to the Tokyo has it, Bucharest, Istanbul. Now in Mexico City, and now the U.S. West Coast does. Now uh, they've run out of money for the Pacific Northwest, and they need a thousand more uh, stations. But hopefully, so in other words, it depends on how far away from the epicenter you are is going to determine how much time you have, and you may have anywhere from zero to ten seconds to maybe even a couple of minutes. Not a couple of minutes, but you may have you may have twelve to twenty seconds. At the, 12 at, to at the 20 seconds. What can be done? Give us an example of how that 12 to 20 seconds could be used uh, for 
the benefit of public safety? Save your life. You're in a downtown. You're, you're in a downtown skyscraper in Los Angeles, getting ready to. You're on the 80th floor, and you're getting ready to get into an elevator, and your cell phone screams. You do not get into that elevator. You're uh, you're on a hair per, hair, hairpin turn. Where do I go? I'm on the 80th floor. I, my cell phone pings. It says in 10 seconds, right? Uh, right. The earthquake is going to hit this building. Where do I go? The stairwell. Well, you certainly do not get into the uh, elevator, and wherever else you go, it will. It but will, I can't it, get from the 80th floor to the ground. No, no, no. You're going to take. Seconds. You're, you're, you're going to take cover, and you're going to ride it out somewhere. Uh, as I said, if you're a surgeon getting ready to uh, place your scalpel into someone's brain, you stop the surgery. You well, stop and, the surgery. And, and trains, trains could stop. It, you're you're the BART Traf- uh, traffic you're the BART operator. Traffic lights could go to red. Yeah, yep. traffic lights yep. could go to red and stop all traffic on bridges. It could close Thousands. close down bridges. Thousands of people's lives will be saved by this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So so ten seconds. I just want to make it clear. Ten seconds doesn't sound like a lot of time, but we live in the digital world now. Ten seconds is an eternity in the digital world, and since everything is run digitally, it can close off bridges. They can shut down elevators. It can warn surgeons so that they don't start surgery uh, at an inappropriate time. Ten seconds is a long time. Absolutely, you 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 said it better than I could have. Excellent. Now, the U.S. Geological Society, you bring them up, and they traditionally have been measuring and keeping records of earthquakes, but they're not traditionally an oversight organization. They're a scientific research group. Do you see the USGS as being in charge of a warning system, or do you see that there'd be some other governmental body that would would handle that? Well, I've you know I've had my run. I've I've been accused of speaking too bluntly about the United States Geological Survey. Let me take this moment. They to, have not been exactly supportive of your work. No, they have not. Uh, but let's but on but on the other side, let's let's make the facts clear. They are one of the greatest uh, things that our republic has has created. Aside, you know, maybe NASA, the Army Corps of Engineers, the United States Geological Survey. I I admire them tremendously. They. They're, it's 9,000 people, I think, $1.1 billion in their budget. They're, for the last 150 years, they're the agency that has discovered our resources and managed our wildlife. They do a lot, and they're the ones that have built this uh, EEW system. Uh, the, they have, they're very conservative. They, uh, they have not uh, – they, they, they don't even say the words earthquake prediction. They've put all their uh, – they've put every – all their – focus on the preparation, you know, and, and that's a good thing because California is as prepared as, as any seismically active region on Earth for a great earthquake. But, you know, Rebecca, pre- preparation can only go so far. Without prediction, uh, uh, the, the Russian, the strike, the, it's one of the greatest uh, weapons that any enemy has in its arsenal, so the, the element of surprise. And taking that away from the San Andreas is going to, as I said prior, be the difference between a run-of-the-mill disaster and an out-and-out catastrophe. So, Well, I'm there hoping- is no greater advantage, not in governance, not in business, not in nature itself, than foresight. Absolutely. Foresight is the greatest advantage that, uh, and, and of all the creatures that uh, inhabit the Earth, humans have the greatest foresight, and now with technology, we're able to predict very accurately further and further out with much more precision than in any other time in human history. There is no reason to believe that earthquake forecasting will not follow that trend and will not become more and more precise, except for that we have cultural biases, we have scientific siloing, government siloing, and funding has continued to be an issue. But as you point out, the U.S. Geological Society, of all the organizations uh, that study the relationship between geology and earthquakes in the United United States is the preeminent body. You all you have to do is look at a map of the United States and where they have installed sensors. There are how, how many sensors do you think that they've installed throughout the United States? It's got to be thousands. There are thousands, thousands. There is, and it's not uh, every sort of sensor: uh, uh, tilt meters, uh, distance meters, uh, gravimeters. There is hardly a twitch that can take place on the earth itself everywhere because of their partners with all the other geological surveys that they're not aware of. So 
I want to make sure that but if the, anybody's... But the big change is that those sensors originally were there to measure earthquake activity as it was happening and after it happened. And right. the big change now is that we're now looking at what those sensors can tell us about the conditions before an earthquake. That's a big difference. And they, But they've laid the groundwork. They have the foundation for an, earth, for, for an early warning system. So my point is they get an A in everything having to do with preparation and, and scientific acumen. And as you say, they're the superlative scientific body on Earth in this matter. Insofar as prediction, they get an F. And I'm going to say it flat out. They've done a terrible job insofar as uh, for all the reasons you mentioned, your, this, uh, the siloing and the government uh, 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 sheep think and uh, re- refusing to take chances uh, in, in, in a matter that affects the 50 million people who live between San Diego and, uh, and Vancouver. There's, there can't be anything more important to people that live in Santa Cruz and, and, and uh, everywhere else on the West Coast other than what's going to happen in the next great earthquake. And the next that's, great earthquake, right. It's, it's, it's right on the horizon, especially in Southern California. The big one is, is, is not something for the far future. It's coming right up. Well, we're going to talk about that in the next segment uh, because, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot to ask you to forecast, but I'm going to. <laughs> they pay me to ask the the difficult questions, so I am going to ask you that. But But I will tell you what, you know, as you point out, the infrastructure, the investment in being able to. Uh, collect this data before there. the earthquakes is in place. And it's I think that's there. what the public needs to know. We have made that investment and we're, we're, we're standing on the launch pad. We're ready to go. Uh, we have to take our last break, but stay tuned. We'll be right back with a forecast. So stay right where you are because you don't want to miss this. You're listening to the Costa Report. Here's a news exclusive for listeners of the Costa Report. And listen up because you won't hear this anywhere else. The date has been set for the release of the follow-on book to The Watchman's Rattle. And you are the first to know. On the Verge will be available in bookstores and airports across the country on September 6th. So if you haven't yet read The Watchman's Rattle or know someone who hasn't, this is the time to get a copy of the only book, Richard Branson, Edward Wilson, and President Trump agree on. You have all summer to find out why The Watchman's Rattle has been a bestseller in 21 countries and get ready for On the Verge when it hits bookstores September 6th. So get your copy of The Watchman's Rattle while there's still time to read it. Just go to RebeccaCosta.com, Amazon, or any online bookstore and get cracking. That's The Watchman's Rattle, available at RebeccaCosta.com, Amazon, and bookstores everywhere. Hi, I'm Joan London. If you're worried about your parent or loved one living alone, like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call a place for mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. Finding an apartment that was on the courtyard with the view of the trees, the view of the ducks, the stream, the creek, all of that, that was what I needed. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. Here's the number. To speak with a local senior living advisor, call A Place for Mom at 800-451-2976. That's 800-451-2976. A Place for Mom is a free service and you can trust them to help you. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. To speak with a local senior living advisor, call A Place for Mom at 800-451-2976. That's 800-451-2976. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to mooch off your friends. You gonna finish that grape? You mean the one in my mouth? You don't need to stop buying the necessities. What you're smelling is a natural musk. Ew. You don't need to be a medical test subject. How do you feel? Mostly okay. I... (laughs) Sometimes, though. (laughs) You don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. We need a new stuntman. Let's break for lunch. You just need an internet connection. 
Don't get left behind. Start your personal savings plan with the tips and tools on feedthepig.org. That way, you don't need to sell your soul to the devil. Fifteen bucks is the best I can do. All right, deal. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. I don't know if you've noticed, but we got a lot of food in this country. A lot of peaches, a lot of corn, a lot of apples, a lot of everything. We've got so much food that we can't even eat it all. So if we got all this extra food, how are 17 million kids in America struggling with hunger? I just don't get it. That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks gathers surplus food and gets it to the hungry kids who need it. They can get you food even if you live in Idaho or Alaska or somewhere crazy like that. This isn't complicated. We got extra food and we've got hungry kids. Feeding America's done the math. Now it's your turn. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. I know you got internet on your phone, so what are you waiting for? We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and if you're just joining us, we have been speaking with earthquake expert David Nabhan. Now, before we get to forecasting, let me ask you about how you respond to people that feel that activities like mining, fracking, drilling for uh, and removing oil in the deep recesses of the earth are increasing instability and the danger of earthquakes. What's your feeling on that? I was one of the first, well, I have mixed feelings, but that's an excellent question. I was one of the first human beings on earth to say publicly that fracking, and, and uh, I'm a big, I'm a fan of fracking. I support fracking, but I'm one of the first people who, uh, in an op-ed in uh, the third largest newspaper in Missouri in 2012, indicated that fracking and earthquake are absolutely uh, connected. So are the building of dams. So are the mines, as you point out, the largest Earthquake in Australia's history, 1989, the Newcastle earthquake from mining. So, I mean, I like electricity. I like driving my car. I'm I'm one of those uh, conservative guys that uh, doesn't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. But to answer you honestly, in a seismic zone like California, if there's any region that should have a right to say we don't want to frack, it might be in California. For the rest of the country, though, I mean, New York has banned fracking, which I think is uh, absurd because there's not one human being who's ever died in the whole history of New York from a from an earthquake. But there have been thousands to die in California. So that's a matter for Californians. But to answer you honestly, fracking, dams, mining absolutely are connected to earthquakes. So there are in some areas like California that are particularly vulnerable where there's a known active fault. You would suggest that those kinds of activities, mining, fracking, drilling, uh, increase instability, increase probability of a major earthquake, and 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 yet in other areas where there may not be an active fault uh, uh, and the risk level is lower, you you think that according to the actual geological makeup of that area, those decisions should be made by the people that live there. Because you know, Rebecca, we every step we take on this planet is fraught with uh, with possible you know dangers. Uh, in the 21st side effects, century. yeah, there's a yeah, side yeah. effect to everything. We and we need uh, we need all those resources from from the ground. I, 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 but to answer you honestly, like I said, if there's maybe the people of California may want to rethink that. Uh, it, it, we we need electricity badly. We need hydrocarbon fuels badly. We need to keep our our, our civilization moving forward. Uh, it depends on wh- how people want to determine the earthquake risks. If it's in Kansas or Florida or New York, I would think it's zero. If it's California, that's not zero. That's Mm -hmm. not zero. Mm -hmm. Now, what about uh, risk factors of earthquakes that are occurring far away, like, let's say, Japan? Uh, Are we monitoring how that affects the coast of California, as an example? You know, in my book, I do. I go all the way back to the beginning of history, and you'd be stunned, Rebecca, at the number. You know, this this idea of earthquakes reverberating around the Ring of Fire. This idea has been. Uh, Thucydides uh, wrote about it. Uh, Aristotle wrote about it. Uh, there have been uh, great scholars of the, in, in the Islamic Golden Age, uh, 
and in uh, in Japan, in ancient Japan, there are, there are people who have have kicked this idea around thousands of years ago, mm-hmm. and to, now there there are many great scientists who believe that what happens in Christchurch, what happens uh, a great earthquake in 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 uh, Tokyo, can reverberate around and does reverberate around the Ring of Fire. That's mm-hmm. a very good fact that you we, bring up. We, yeah, it really seems to be far more than a correlation or a probability of chance because we see a major earthquake event, and then not long after that, we see areas that are very far away beginning to shift and show movement. And uh, And I think that over a period of time, we'll be able to connect those dots. Again, we're knitting together a lot of sciences, disparate sciences, you know, from – from you know looking from outer space to looking at the geological measurements to looking at, at electromagnetic measurements you know we we have to knit all this science together in order to get uh, to solve the real mystery now i said i didn't want to put you on the spot but you know i i have to uh what areas of the United States are at most risk? We know California, uh, also the Oregon and, and uh, Washington coasts uh, are in some uh, have some exposure. Uh, what areas of the United States are in the most danger and what's your forecast? You say the big one is coming. Uh, what's the time frame for that? Well, in the uh, in the 1980s, the working group on California earthquake probabilities issued their findings that when the the big one might strike, and they they uh, said there was a 50 percent chance on the uh, Coachella Valley, for example, Coachella Valley se- segment of the San Andreas that it would strike before 2018. Well, 2018 is next year. I mean, decades have gone by, and there's no seismologist on the planet who isn't well aware that uh, the the that the Southern California is in. In, on the ver- is in for a, a large seismic event in the very near future. And the facts, Rebecca, are stunning, and they're going to stun your, uh, your audience, too. Every human being who ever died in an earthquake in greater Los Angeles in the 20th century, all 262 people, died in the same three-hour window around dawn or at dusk. Every killer earthquake, Long Beach, Gorman, Silmar, Northridge, Whittier Narrows, Sierra Madre, struck between 4.45 and 7.55 a.m. or p.m., and what's more, two-thirds of them, on top of that other, you know, uh, unusually anomalous probability of the lunar tide, of the solar tides, two-thirds of them also struck within 36 hours of the precise moment of new or full moon phase. So I've done the math, and professors in math departments have redone it, and that's not possible due to happenstance. It's It's a clear signal that some underlying periodicity is triggering these large tremors in Southern California. So that is outside the scope of the probability of chance. It's outside of a simple correlation. Mathematically, it's a key indicator that that the greatest risks seem to be at dawn and at dusk and also uh, when the new moon is... Dawn and uh, at dusk is, during is, new yeah, and full moons. During the, Cur- new and full moons. Uh, and- so we know that there are higher risks based on historical data. And the empirical evidence, as you say, is just, uh, it's astounding. Uh, Popular Science took a look at it, and their quote was, this is, uh, and I'm quoting them, uh, it's in my book also, this is simple but brilliant observation, impossible to dismiss as coincidence. Mm -hmm. Uh, The the math screams that some underlying uh, periodicity is taking place there. I've noticed any time we tie anything to the moon, people kind of look at you like you're a lunatic. There's where the problem. <laughs> I mean, they they start they throw you in there with astrologers or or something. I don't I don't know what happens in the scientific community. The minute you bring up, well, it's it's tied to the phases of the moon. You're they look at you like you know you you can't be a, a, a real scientist. Well, but but lunar and solar gravitational tides are stupendously they're real. Po- no, they're stupendously <laughs> powerful forces. Uh, every yes, day we I see know. them pick up the Pacific Ocean and yank it to the other side of the planet. It's I think astrology. Astrologists have ruined that for us. <laughs> I'm going to blame the astrologists. I'm, I'm on board with you. Boy, I've paid for it for the last 20 years like I no know one. you have. I know you have, and that's why we've. it's been a pleasure to have you on, on the program. Uh, I, I, you say that uh, the next critical event in California is going to happen fairly shortly. We have a couple, uh, just a couple of seconds here. When you say in the near term, what are you talking about? Because I'm an mean, evolutionary biologist, okay. you know, near term is a million years for me. No, I'm, I'll answer that very honestly and very and very uh, uh, bravely. I'm not talking about decades. I'm talking about months. 
20 months, 30 mm -hmm. months, 50 months, something like that. It's not decades or years away into the future. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad to, to be on, on record as saying that. All right. Well, you are on record, sir, in all 50 states now, and uh, this is all the time that we have today. So uh, let me, first of all, thank you for your courageous work, and I hope you'll come back and give us an update soon in the future. Thank you so much for having me on, Rebecca. It's been a real pleasure to talk with you. You're a great interviewer. And that's a wrap of our first hour, folks. And if you haven't yet done so, take a moment to check out our website at RebeccaCosta.com where you, you'll find additional information about earthquake detection and precursors, as well as information on next week's guest, who will be here to shed light on yet another controversial topic right here on the only news program that puts policy ahead of politics. And I want to thank our guest, uh, David Nabhan, again. Uh, for um, clarifying a lot of the information that is floating out uh, around the the media in particular that is misreporting and uh, and a lot of the information that's out there about earthquake detection. I know, folks, it sounds like it's, you know, woohoo science, but it really is not. So take a moment to check it. Check out the facts yourself uh, again. We'll see you back here next week right here on the only news program that puts policy ahead of politics. You're listening to the Costa Report. Hi, it's MZ from KSCO in Santa Cruz. And though I don't care much for people who brag, I'm going to do just a little of it now and hope you will give me a pass by calling it Just Being Proud. Our station can afford to be innovative and refreshingly different because we use education and logic to promote great health products that change people's lives for the better. We also help people build strong businesses that create residual income through a wonderful low-cost business opportunity that we have developed and refined during the last 20 years. We believe that Rebecca Costa's large audience is comprised of particularly intelligent and educated persons, some of whom may want to earn more money. If you are tired of being someone else's wage slave and are ready to go to work building your own excellent supplement business that can provide you and your family income and become a saleable and willable asset, I want to talk with you. Send an email to mz at we don't have to be poor dot com. That's mz at we don't have to be poor dot com. Unexpected reactions to smart financial decisions brought to you by feedthepig.org. Well, I finally did it. I improved my credit score. You're kidding, right? Uh, no. How are we supposed to be the bad boys of electrosynth pop if you're out there being responsible? The band is about to be discovered. This is our year. Uh, yeah, you've been saying that for a while now. You think anyone in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was worried about their credit score? I never really thought that Of you're... course they weren't. Rock stars aren't supposed to think about that kind of stuff. We're supposed to think about how many guitars we've smashed, write aggressively sensitive power ballads, start questionable fashion trends, tragically break up and blame creative differences. All right, all right, just... I thought maybe it was time to take control of my finances, you know? Start using a budget. Get out of debt. Set some goals. A budget? Debt? Set some goals? Listen, I knew that we'd have our creative differences, but I was hoping they'd involve a little more scandal. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. The Costa Report is now heard in all 50 states on fine radio stations, including this one.